everyone. So today's lesson will be about force and acceleration. And this comes from the Newton's second law of motion. So go on my previous video if, if you do not know what I'm talking about. Now, some lessons ago, I told you that uh, you have an object and you have the forces acting on an object, the resultant force. Now, the force is acting on an object, all the forces acting on that object, taking the direction of the forces into account, so the resultant force, um, these forces can, they can be balanced or unbalanced. If my forces are balanced, my resultant force is zero and my object does not change uh, its state of motion. So it remains stationary or remains at constant speeds. If the forces on an object are unbalanced, the resultant force on that object is different to zero. And my object is going to speed up or slow down if it was already moving, or if it was not moving, meaning if it was stationary or at rest, it will start to move in the direction of the biggest force, okay? So today we're focusing on this part of speeding up or slowing down. So when an object speeds up or slows down, the velocity is changing over time. We call that acceleration. Acceleration can be positive or negative. If I have a positive acceleration, the resultant force is in the same direction as the motion of my object. And I have a positive acceleration. My object, therefore, accelerates or speeds up. If my acceleration is negative, I can call it deceleration. I have negative acceleration or deceleration when the resultant force is acting on the opposite direction to the direction of the motion uh, of my object. So opposing the motion to my object. And if that happens, as I said, I have deceleration, so my object slows down, okay? So, there are two ways of calculating acceleration. You already know the two ways from my previous videos, but now I'm putting them all together in the same uh, slide. So, you can use the acceleration formula that is the change in velocity over time taken. So, change in velocity in here, say speed, is in meters per second over the time taken in seconds. That means that acceleration will be in meters per second squared or then by using Newton's second law, which says force equals mass times acceleration. And you have the force in Newtons, the mass in kilograms, and the acceleration is going to be in meters um, per second squared. There is a way to show that force over mass is going to be giving you meters per second square, but it's not coming right on this video, okay? So you have two ways of calculating acceleration and you decide which way you are going to use in your exercises uh, regarding or considering if they are giving you changes in speed and times or if they, they are giving you resultant forces and masses, okay? Now, imagine that I want to rearrange the second formula, the, law, uh, the second law of motion formula, F equals MA, to get the mass or the acceleration. So the mass is going simply to be force over the acceleration and the acceleration is going to be the force over mass, okay? Mass comes in kilograms and acceleration comes in meters second squared, okay? Or meters per second squared. So we now know formulas to calculate acceleration. You know Newton's second law. So we are going to practice this. I have here a table that I got from IQA and I have the resultant force in Newtons, I have the mass in kilograms, the acceleration in meters per second squared, and I have the formula mass times acceleration uh, in kilograms meters per second squared. And I want you to fill in the gaps. So I have one, two, seven, which is covered, so I don't have the answers in there. And I want you to fill in the gaps and figure out what number you get, okay? So the first one, the first six is to fill in the gaps. The last one, number seven, is to look at the velocity time graph, see that all the three objects were pushed with the same amount of force, which had a greater mass, and explain your answer just by looking at the graph. So pause the video if you want to try it yourself, which you should, otherwise I'm going to go through the answers now. So in one and six, I want acceleration. So that I do by doing the resultant force over the mass, okay? So do 0.5 over one, that gives you 0.5. I'll do the same for six, okay? 
In question two, I want the mass. Mass is going to be the force over acceleration, so one over one, that gives me one. Um, in number three, I want the resultant force. Resultant force equals mass times acceleration, so one times 1.5, that gives me mass times acceleration, 1.5. In number four, I want the mass. I do force over acceleration, two over one, that gives me two. In number five, I want resultant force. That's mass times acceleration, that's two times two, that gives me four, which is the same value that I have here as mass times acceleration. In number six, I want acceleration, that's force over mass, six over two, that gives me three, okay? Now, in this Question, so the force is the same, but um, green accelerated less than red, for example. So I will know that green has a larger mass and red has the shortest mass because force equals mass times acceleration. Therefore, for the same force, if I get a bigger mass, I will get, therefore, a smaller acceleration. And I have all of here... All of that now written in here, okay? So mass, force, and acceleration. If I have the same force, because force equals mass times acceleration, the greater the mass, the smaller the acceleration. The smaller the mass, the greater the acceleration. So just think about it. If you apply the same force to try to push a dog or an elephant, your the dog is going to accelerate much easier, so much uh, will have a greater acceleration than the elephant. So there you go. Bigger mass means more difficult to accelerate the object for the same force. If you have the same mass, the greater the force, the greater the acceleration. The smaller the force, the smaller the acceleration. So imagine you have a one kilogram box, for example. You want to make it move and uh, speed up, for example. You apply the same force. Uh, you apply a bigger force, it will accelerate more. You apply a smaller force, it will accelerate less. Okay? More exercises, which again, I believe I took from AQA. They are not mine. So, calculate the resultant force on a sprinter of mass 80 kilograms who accelerates at 8 meters per second squared. Again, try to answer these four questions uh, without my help. Pause the video. I'm going to go through the answers now, so pause it now, otherwise you will get spoilers. So, First one, I want resultant force, that's mass times acceleration, 80 times 8, that gives me 640 newtons. Normally is a mark for the working out, a mark for the answer, a mark for the units. So three mark question. Calculate the acceleration of an object of mass 5 kilograms acted on by a resultant force of 40 newtons. So, actually, I think this question is mine. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, calculate the acceleration. That's force over mass. So, you do 40 over 5. That gives you 8. And the units are meters per second squared. Again, three marks. Working out number and units. Number three, calculate the acceleration of a car of mass 800 kilograms acted on by a resultant force of 3,200 newtons. Again, I want acceleration, that's force over mass, 3,200 over 800, that's a mark, it gives me four, that's the second mark, meters per second squared, that's three marks. And finally, last question, they say a toy car accelerates at 2 meters per second squared when a force of 10 newtons is applied. What is its mass? So again, the mass is going to be the force over acceleration. So I'm going to do uh, 10 over 2, that gives me 5, and the units are kilograms. So, we know how to do the questions. Uh, just last exercise, are the sentences to do with speeding up or slowing down? So, the velocity of an object increases. What does it relate to? So, which two sentences it re relates to? So, it relates for, again, freeze the video or pause the video. It relates for resultant force in the same direction as velocity. Therefore, velocity increases. It relates for, oh, Sorry, uh, now the velocity of the object decreases has to do with resultant force in the opposite direction to the velocity. So same direction, you increase speed, acceleration. Opposite direction, you decrease speed, deceleration. Acceleration is negative because, it's, it was supposed to say because, it is in the opposite direction to the velocity. 
so object's velocity decreases. And last sentence, acceleration is positive because it's on the same direction as the velocity. This gives me positive acceleration, velocity of the object increases. And that is it. That's all you need to know about force and acceleration. I hope it made sense. Up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.